content grows over time and this creates a greater and greater need for us to understand what are the spaces that exist within our organization. To lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world class Microsoft 365 internet and digital workplace? One of the simplest and easiest examples of this challenge, um, and it's very pertinent, is if you've ever used Microsoft Teams, Teams really does not scale well for things like navigation. So you can kind of get away with SharePoint site structures with you have a great internet design and some things like that. But when you start to have a lot of teams um, and a lot of uh, redundant teams, teams with similar names, it becomes really challenging for an end user to navigate. This is literally a screenshot of our environment. We're only a 30, 40 person organization. And you can see that we have a lot of redundant sales groups. Now these are, they're not redundant. There's a purpose behind them. Some of them have logos and stuff that make it a little bit cleaner and easier to understand what it is. But you can see where using GoTo or the pins or other kinds of favoriting tools and tools that Microsoft gives you out of the box to navigate you know, the many spaces you work becomes really not sufficient. It's necessary and it's great that they have some of these tools, but they just don't scale and they don't work when you have a lot of uh, different interactions and you're working across multiple teams. So this is where we need something better than what Microsoft provides. Another example of this is you might think, well, yeah, maybe that's an issue for end users, but administrators and other people, they understand all the spaces that exist. Well, that's not really true too, because private channels don't show up. And if you look at like all the site collections as an example in SharePoint, it's really difficult to understand what's the purpose of this site? You know, what, who created it? Which department does it relate to? Is there a business sponsor associated with it? There's all sorts of information that's missing from our sort of site directory uh, for administrative purposes. And yes, it has some great tools in here but it's again not sufficient for most organizations and what they need to do the kind of life cycle management they need to do the proactive support that they need to do uh, and other things as well so we'll talk a little bit about those gaps but essentially the tools as they are while great do have shortcomings when it comes to governance and this is um, very very clear at scale when you have uh, thousands of different sites and thousands of teams this is also quite problematic because um, while this, you know, SharePoint sprawl has been a thing for a long time, um, team sprawl is a little bit more prevalent than SharePoint sprawl was. One of the reasons for that is if I have a project A team and a project B team, and I want to share something across those two project teams, the general uh, approach that is used in teams is to create a project A, B team, to create essentially another space that you would then have, you know, a consistent uh, group of members from each of those teams that would then share assets and resources and things of that nature. And so if that was the model, that's going to create more teams, right? We're going to create a greater volume of these. Not to mention the fact that in SharePoint, uh, as we move forward, we want to be more flat with our structures, which also creates more site collections. So we're seeing a huge increase in the containers or the collections, right? Whether that's a site collection or a Microsoft Teams, which is a collection of channels, we're seeing a greater um, uh, swath of these collections being created. And that's creating um, even more of a challenge around navigation, around permissions and search and other things like that, which we'll talk about. Um, that's not even highlighting the other challenge, which is like how private channels work, uh, the lack of governance tools on some of those things and other things like that that we'll talk about today as well. Hey everyone, thanks again for making the time today. Um, if you're watching the recording or you're attending the, uh, the live webinar, I will warn you, I tend to talk pretty fast and the content's gonna be pretty dense. The slides are already up available on SlideShare, but the recording and uh, other material can be grabbed uh, from the Orchestra website as a follow-up. 